Right, so there are six situations that we can get out of having three sets of equations. So the system of equation can give us six different geometrical representations. The first three are pretty easy. The last three are the complicated ones. So the first one is the one that we deal with mostly. All right. It's the picture on your piece of paper. So it looks like one plane like this and ultimately these three planes meet at a point so it's kind of like the planes in a classroom so you've got this front plane the roof plane the wall plane they all meet at that point up there all right so it's our situation where we actually end up with one point as our answer. So that particular one gives us a unique solution. So it's consistent is the word they like to use for this particular set or system of equations. All right, so this, and it is also dependent. All right, so we describe this in words as three planes meeting at one point. That point being our unique solution. All right. The second situation is floating planes. All right, so floors of a building, they don't intersect. They're parallel, we hope, in a building too, but they're parallel. So those three planes don't have any answer to them. So we call them inconsistent. So no points of intersection. So what does this look like? Well, this one obviously can look like all of those things that you do, do and end up putting your calculator and get an answer. So you can always find an answer on your calculator using that. You might have to rewrite your equations first, but you can always find that situation. When the three planes are parallel, we need to be able to see, we need to look with our eyes to see what's going on. So it's always good to write it in that AX, B, Y, C, Z equals something sort of a... Um, System and what you will find is that you've got this situation. So these, this part of our picture, are just multiples. But what's them stop them from being the same line? is that their equal to part are all not multiples, all right? So that means they all sit separately. So although the plane is designed in the same way, so we have our vertical, our horizontal, and our depth, our plane sits there, it moves around wherever it happens to be parallel to each other, parallel to the plane, all right? So that sort of situation is usually quite easy to see because you're looking at the numbers that are in front. And if they are multiples, all three, then you get this situation. Okay? The third one is not on your piece of paper. Here's one. Here's two. Here's three. Right? They are, in fact, the same plane. This actually provides us with 
anything on that plane being a solution. So we get multiple solutions. And those solutions are dependent on each other. What does this look like? Same as this pretty much, but the last part of it is also a multiple. So if you were to try and solve this, you would end up with zero equals zero. So in solving, you're going to get zero equals zero. That is an indicator of multiple solutions. If you solve this one, you're going to get zero equals a number. That's an indicator that in, there aren't actually any solutions. So those are the three easy ones. All right, give a few seconds to copy that down. So the next one, we draw like this. Like a book, all right? So all of the planes actually meet at a line. So in fact, there is a line of solutions. Anything on that line will work in the equations. So therefore, this is a dependent because one solution will depend on the value of another, a dependent set of solutions, and we in fact get multiple <coughs> solutions, any point on the line. All right? So what does this look like? Okay, we're going to have a look at what this looks like. So, six x plus five y minus eight z equals thirteen. Five x minus y plus two z equals five. x plus 3y minus 5z equals 4. All right. So you can't tell this by looking at that. You're going to assume that this has, has something happening to it. When you put this in your calculator, you're going to get your famous ma error. It's going to tell you you've done something wrong. And in fact, what that usually means is you're trying to somewhere divide by zero or equate things that aren't equal. So to actually find out what's going on here, we have to go through the process of trying to solve it, all right? So let's see what happens if we go through that process. We need to get rid of um, x, y, or z. So let's use 2 times 3, I'm going to go for y, times 2 times, uh, 2 times 2. plus 3. So we've got 2 times 2 is 8x minus 3. 3 times 2. Oh, God. 3 times 2. 12x minus 3y plus 6z equals 15. And 3x plus 3y minus 5z equals 4. Add them together, 13x, no y's, 1z equals 19. Doing another one, so we'll go 5 times 2 and add that to 1. So 5 times 2 is 20x minus 5y plus 10z equals 25, and 1 is 6x 
plus 5y minus 8z equals 13. And we add those together and we get 26x, none of those, plus 2z equals 38. So what can you see? Right? These two lines are the same. Right? That's the line where they crash. We can't go any further because we can't get rid of x and or z. Anything we try to do to get rid of x is going to get rid of z as well. So when we sit, end up with this situation, we know that is our geometric representation. All right? We have a line of solutions, and this portrays that. Okay, next one. Five. Is two planes meet at a line parallel to okay. So we get this picture. Two planes, two parallel planes, and one that goes through them. So we get these two lines here. And unlike this one, which is the same, in this one, these two are going to be parallel. All right, so two, uh, two lines meet at two planes, two, two planes meet, two planes meet at a line parallel to the other plane. All right, so two planes meet at a line, which is that line is parallel with that plane. Okay. Um, so because this one, there isn't anything in common to all three planes, this is inconsistent, and therefore it has no solutions. Again, you'll put this in your calculator, and your calculator go, woo, 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 no answer. All right, so what does this look like? Oh, I've written that wrong. Two planes meet. Sorry, this bit's wrong. Oh, I'm sorry. I know I've mucked up your notes. Uh, two planes parallel, the third cuts these. Two planes are parallel. So, okay, two planes parallel to third cuts these, that's right. Okay, so when you're going about solving this one, and this one, you were going to end up with that zero equals zero situation. Zero equals zero tells you there's multiple, there's multiple solutions. In this one, when you go about it, you're going to get zero equals k, tells you there's no solutions. All right, so that's our, our guiding. So let's have a look at one of these. This one, again, is quite easy to see. But don't get fooled. All right, so what have we got here? Multiples, but with the end, not a multiple. Two parallel planes. This is not a multiple because that's a minus. So therefore, this plane will intersect them somewhere, but we just don't know where. All right, so we're looking for two of the equations being multiples, but not what they're equal to. All right, to give that one away. So when we solve this, if we try to do anything here, right, if I try to operate on these two equations, when I double this one and subtract this one, I'm going to end up with 0x is 0y, 0z's, which is 0 equals 12. 0 equals 12 can't happen, so therefore this solution, this set of system, the system of equations does not have a solution. Happy? Right, now the other one. 
So the last one is their favourite for some reason when they're writing assessments. Everybody seems to think we should know how to do this one. <laughs> That's my best go at drawing it. It's a lot better in your notes. But basically what's happening here is it's like a pack of cards. You stack the cards up on each other. It's got a nice little tunnel through the middle. That's a triangular triangle. It makes a triangular prism through it. All right. So we call this the triangular prism. And I mean, it's easy to identify if you don't get an answer on your calculator because it doesn't give you any of these other situations, but it's probably the hardest to sit there and work out. So, um, three planes form two planes meet at a nine parallel to the bin. Alright, so this is what I was trying to say before. So here they are, they meet here, and that line there happens to be, that's those two meeting, happens to be parallel to the bottom. So you've got this line traveling along parallel to your bottom. So when you're building a set of cards, it's that, that you put your cards together, that line forms with the bottom of the table as your third plane. All right? Or you can do the card with the table as parallel to the one over here too. Okay, so what does this look like? Um, so when we do this one, what do you think we're going to get? When we solve it, we're going to get... Zero equals K. No solutions. There is no solution to this. There's not multiple solutions. There's no solutions. So it is inconsistent. We need to know these words. You need to talk about the system of equations being inconsistent. Therefore, there are no solutions. And we end up with that zero equals K situation. All right. So what does this look like? Get the right equation. Okay, I'm going to go back over here. Copy them out. We've got x minus 2y plus z equals 0. Negative 2x plus 3y plus z equals negative 4. 2x minus y minus 7 is z equals 2. Okay, so this doesn't give anything away, but when you go to your calculator and you put in 1, negative 2, 1, 0, negative 2, 3, 1, negative 4, 2, negative 1, negative 7, 2, and you push solve, it's going to say, eh, eh, can't do. Alright, so it looks like it's one that you should be able to just solve. There's no giveaways in this particular set, it's similar to this one here. There's no giveaways until you start working away at it. All right? So you need to work away at it till you get to this situation so you can say, oh, well, there's one of three things that can be happening here. They can be parallel planes. They're not because there's not, there's not multiples. It could be um, this situation, the book situation, but it's not going to be because it's going to be that one over there. So we start off and call them one, two, or three and see what happens. So, twice one plus two. Okay, I'm not going to bother writing it all out. So twice of that plus that is nothing. Two times that negative four plus that is negative y. Two times that plus that is three z. Two times zero plus that is negative four. Happy? All right. Now I've got rid of x. I'm going to add these two together. So two plus three. That one adds up to get nothing. 3x minus is positive 2y, z minus is minus 6z equals negative 4, adding negative 2. 
What can you see? If I times this one by 2 and add it to this one, I'm going to get 0 equals, times this one by 2, add it to this one, negative 10. So now I know the situation, I just don't know which situation it is. I know that these two, one at, that there is something parallelly going on here. There is a parallel line in here somewhere. So that's, this line is parallel, in fact, with everything on this plate. But at the moment, all I know is this line is parallel with one plate, one place. Now I have to prove that, that, that I can't have it the other way around as well. So I need to try it with another variable, all right? So I'm going to do z. So if I do 1 minus 2, I'm going to get 1 minus that is plus is 3x. That minus that is minus 5y equals that minus that is 4. And I'm going to do 7 times 1 plus 3. So 7 times that plus that is 9x. 7 times that plus that, <laughs> negative 14, negative 15. And 7 times that plus that is 2. Oh, look, I've got another set. So here's my issue. It's not just two sets that are parallel. There are more things that are parallel in this. So now that I've proved that this one is 3 times that plus minus that, going to 3 times that minus that, 10 or something, I'm now seeing a picture. All right? I'm seeing that these are actually similar to each other, and this identifies for me that I've got that situation. All right? So it's understanding the actual equations and figuring out which situ situation you have. And you can only do that by manually solving it because your calculator will give you for all the other situations an error. It will only ever tell you if there is a solution. It won't tell you what of these. So you have to work it to be able to get these and be careful working it so you don't make any mistakes.